Caleb with Brownells here, back in the studio, going over the guns of Tarkov with Jesse Holtzman, aka Jesse Kazam, Twitch streamer and YouTuber. Jesse, what is Tarkov? Yeah, so Escape from Tarkov is a video game that really kind of sets itself apart as being one of the games with the most kind of like immersive and realistic way that um, firearms are built and handled by the player uh, and manipulated and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I mean, what we're looking at today, so the, the game periodically wipes its entire progress because it's still in its beta phase. So every once in a while, the game just completely resets everybody back to zero. And when that happens, this is basically your first few weeks of the wipe right here. A lot of the Russian weapons, the SKS, the Mosin, and the AK. So I'm excited to learn about this stuff in real life. Yeah, look, as far as playing the actual game goes, uh, this is my second wipe. So not only am I familiar with these firearms in real life, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I've gotten very familiar with them in the game <laughs> in the as well. Game. So, you know, just kind of breaking it down, you, as the gamer who maybe didn't even know what these guns were, yeah. and then playing the game, you can look at these and be like, oh, I know exactly what guns those are, right? Yep, yeah. yeah. I have, uh, the, the game has taught me a lot about being able to see and learn what the differentiations are between the different calibers and the different um, firearms, and it's cool to see them kind of in real life. So let's start with the Mosin. Um, yes. One of the oldest guns in the game, maybe not development-wise, I, I don't know, yeah. I haven't been around that long, but definitely as far as, you know, what year the guns came out in real life, yeah. this is this is one of the oldies here. So the Mosin? Yeah, got. this is, so this, yeah, this has become a very classic firearm in Escape from Tarkov. This wasn't added at the beginning, it was maybe a little over a year ago, and it very quickly became something that it's it's cheap, they're, they're readily available in the game, and at least in the game, they shoot a big, powerful round. And so it became something, a really easy way to just, if you've got good aim and, and you can you can sacrifice that time to the chamber another one, then it's a it's devastating. Yeah, so, you know, Tarkov isn't one of those bullet spongy games. So even later in the game, you know, you're, you're going up against guys that are, that have um, better firearms, yeah. better gear, better armor, different yeah. things like that. If you catch them off guard with the Mosin, it's game over. It's a one shot. It can take them down. And that it really sh it shook up the whole game because of that, because this was a cheap, readily available weapon that could take down just about anybody. Is that kind of how they function in real life? Was this was this used a lot? Is it was it was it cheap? Is it cheap in real life? Because it's kind of just viewed as that, oh, I don't I don't have any money, I'll just grab a Mosin so in the game. They're they're a little bit more expensive now, but yeah. when I bought my personal Mosin, I paid like eighty nine bucks for it. Uh, so it's super cheap. They, wow. There are a ton of them imported in the United States. This was the gun in World War II okay. for, for the Russians. So yeah. they made a ton of them. <laughs> so if you've ever seen like something like the movie, like Enemy at the Gates, uh, yeah. you know, all about the, the snipers in Stalingrad, this was the gun. And they were used as sniper rifles, basically, right? In Tarkov, we see people using them as short range, just so, trying to get some really quick one shots on people, but so, yeah, it's a long range weapon. It, it's, it, it was your standard infantry rifle. So this was used, you know, it was, it was given to guys to clear out buildings because okay. that's all they had. Oh, So wow. not, not everyone had a submachine gun just because they couldn't make enough. Wow. Of them. So this was this was the gun, and then it was converted into a sniper variant as well that you could put a scope on. Okay. Um, but variants like this one have no way to attach a, an optic. Mm. Uh, so that was a modification that they had to make. So super cool history behind that. Interesting. And both variants are in Escape from Tarkov. Yeah. As well as the carbine variant, which has a shorter barrel. Uh, that's that's also in the game, and also was used quite a bit. That's super interesting. So, talking about the actual cartridge it fires, this is the 762 by 54 r I'll let you take that there. And then you can kind of compare that to your standard, you know, your AK 762 by 39 round. Okay, so this is more of a standard AK. This yep. is 762, and then this is 54R. Yep, so same diameter bullet. Obviously, the cases are a lot longer, so yeah. you got a lot, a lot more, a lot more juice coming out of there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's it. And, you know, there's a... That's wild. And it's not, you know, in Escape from Tarkov, it's not just you have this cal this gun shoots this caliber bullet. You have this gun shoots this caliber bullet. you got to pack your own mags. What mm -hmm. type of ammo are you going to put in there? Yeah. So you have BT, you have PS, uh, as far as, you know, the, the Russian bullets go. And then you have a lot of other stuff there as well. So it's super in-depth. That, 
And that's a huge learning process for somebody coming from more of the video game aspect where a lot of times it doesn't even let you know. A lot of times video games in the past will just give you like heavy weapon or light weapon. They don't even tell you what caliber you're shooting, let right. alone now in Tarkov, you want 5.56 or you want 7.62 and you've got eight or nine different choices. And why use this one over the other one? When do you use this one? What is this gonna be more or less effective against? All that was a huge learning process for me as far as how um, firearms work in real life versus what we're trained in just playing video games. Exactly, yeah, because you have, you know, with different cartridge varieties, you have different muzzle velocities. Mm -hmm. All within the same caliber, you have different muzzle velocities. Um, what's that bullet going to do when it impacts? Yeah. Uh, if it impacts flesh, if it impacts armor, you got to take all that into account in the in the game. Yep. So that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy. Yep, absolutely. So that, that's kind of one of the big things that drew me to it as well. Yeah. And it's just that system by itself. And not even getting into the weapon modification stuff. Yeah. So let's uh, let's step it up a bit. Okay. So that 7.62x39 is also used in your SKS. Another classic, classic escape from Tarkov. Either new player or after a fresh wipe, this is a, uh, a gun you can get really cheap. You can get it day one. And at least in the game, 762 PS is what you can get early on, and it's a pretty devastating round. Yeah, and again, with that caliber, there's a huge variety yeah. of, of, uh, of types of bullets yeah. that you can get it in, or cartridge loadouts. So this gun here, super cheap in the game, um, but you can trick it out as well. Yeah. You can put you know the detachable magazine on it. Yep. Um, and different stocks and, and stuff like the optics. So there's a lot you can do to it. And when, like, what was this used as? Was, did this kind of replace the Mosin, or was just this in a different area of the world used as kind of like the the so token rifle? It was a predecessor to the AK-47. Okay. So this was in development while that cartridge was being developed. Kinda, oh, really? Kind of like right around the end of World War II, going into that Cold War era. Understood. And then this gun was also sold to a lot of companies. Uh, China made a ton of them. Mm. Uh, used that uh, 762 by 39 with it as well. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of history there, uh, just in the SKS. But SKS was a gun that was mass produced. Yeah. So they're they were relatively cheap in the United States. Prices on them have, have gone up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, just because there aren't as many as there used to be imported. All right, and lastly, let's talk about the AK-47 and its variants, like the AKM. So basically the AKs that shoot the 762 yep. by 39 And this is another, I mean, coming from the video game world, this is an AK is a classic a gun to be used in almost every shooter game ever made. And I, my mind was blown coming into Tarkov and all the different variants of AKs. I didn't know that AKs were chambered in multiple different rounds and how many variations there are and how mod uh, like how much you can actually modify these it feels like in the movies you only ever see the the ak with no stock and people are just you know kind of just yep. shooting it all yep. over the place so it was really cool to learn about this weapon system and how like wide it goes yeah so the ak you know itself in real life and in the game there's a ton of stuff you can do to it yeah stocks grips you know furniture dust covers, optics, even magazines. There's yeah. different types of magazines you can use that, you know, have different benefits as well. Like the, the Magpul is usually like my go-to in game. Yeah, yep. Uh, just because that's a good AK magazine. And like I said before, you gotta pack your own magazines. So you gotta kinda take into consideration what magazines you're gonna bring yeah. and what you're gonna be putting in them. Because uh, that's gonna determine, you know, how successful you can be yeah. in the actual game. Uh, just like in real life, you know, you would pack your mags, choose your mags um, accordingly. So. Yeah, and I'm assuming the history of the AK is just as extensive as the gun itself. I mean, there's so many different variants. It's been used all over the place. It's become a all very quintessential it. kind of like movie AK for uh, anything outside of the United States. A lot of people you see using AKs, like, is this just something that's been continually iterated on? Because from a gamer and a viewer, it feels like you're seeing the same one in every game. Yeah, and there's there's that, and then you have all the variants that exist in real life, and a lot of them which are in Escape from Tarkov, like your you have your AKM, uh, you have your AK-74s yeah. shooting your 545-39. Then you even have your 101s and your 102s. Yeah. So now you're shooting 556. Yep, which is one of my favorite things to do, just because not a lot of people know you can do it. It's just 
trick out an AK-101 and shoot some 5.56. And recently we were kind of like introduced, or at least I was introduced to the fact that this even exists, but kind of like a crossover platform, which was the Mark 47 Mutant, right. which shoots the 7.62, but on a platform very similar to an AR. So it's basically, the, the CMMG Mutant is basically a AR, AR-15, or mm -hmm. AR, I'll say AR-15, but the one in the game is, yeah. is the full auto variant. Um, it's that, but it shoots 7.62 by yeah. 39, and it takes AK mags. Yeah. Which, if you're going to make a reliable AR-15 that shoots 7.62-39, a really good way to do it, if you want to do a high capacity magazine, is to just make it take AK mags. Mm. So, Interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, that's one of those... Um, one of those cool guns I got to shoot here recently, doing really? some stuff with uh, AR15.com or ARFCOM, and uh, we did a review on the Mutant whenever it kind of first came out, and I uh, got to put some rounds down range, and it is a excellent firearm in real life as, as it is in the really game. That's really cool. And you know, th with that, there's a lot of stuff you can do to it because you're shooting the 7.62 by 39 now, but you get to use all your AR15 attachments, attachments and, and yeah. furniture and stuff like that and you can throw that on there. So you get the best of kind of both worlds. Yeah. There. All right, and that is just kind of scratching the surface on some of the Russian guns in mm -hmm. Escape from Tarkov. Um, it, it goes a lot further than yeah. this, but uh, but we'd be here all day trying to, to trying to go through every little detail on it. So, Jesse, I appreciate you coming out, going over these with me, giving me that that extra perspective. Gamer perspective, that thank gamer you so much for having me. Uh, absolutely, man, so it's been a pleasure. Um, so, if you have any questions or comments, Feel free to leave them down below. And if you haven't already, if you're on Twitch, go ahead and follow Jesse on Twitch. He's on YouTube as well. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button there and here. And we will catch you in the next video when we go over some more Guns of Tarkov.